Welcome to Central Washington University's annual State of the University presentation. My name is Walter Saliga. I'm the faculty member in the geological, in the CWU's geological sciences department, and I'm this year's chair of the faculty senate. I'm pleased to recognize others in our university's leadership team who are here today. If you'll please rise when I announce your name. President James L. Gaudino. Interim Provost Lynn Franken. President of our Student Association, Jasmine Washington. She's in class. <laughs> Chair of our Classified Staff Employee Association, Lydia Anderson. Did I start too early? Okay. Excellent. They're standing, you just can't see them. Chair of our Exempt Employee Association, Carolyn Thurston. Our student trustee, Alex Harrington and other members of the cabinet. Please join me in a round of applause for our university leaders. It's my honor to introduce the chair of the CWU Board of Trustees, Ron Erickson. Ronald P. Erickson has served on the Board of Trustees since 2010, and he was elected chair in 2018. He has more than 35 years of experience as a manager, attorney, and senior level executive leading technology enterprises in the global marketplace. He is an entrepreneur and an innovator who has been instrumental in building several successful businesses. Ron also has deep local roots. His family began homesteading in Ellensburg in 1876. He is a graduate of Ellensburg High School as well as a graduate of Central Washington University. He also holds an MA from the University of Wyoming and his Juris Doctorate from the University of California, Davis. Please join me in welcoming Ron Erickson. I love this auditorium. Uh, I used to come here and watch uh, Bert Christensen lead the central band and Wayne Hertz lead the chorus back in, the, I'm going to date myself now, back in the uh, 1950s and early 1960s. So it's, it's always a pleasure to come back into this majestic hall. Thank you, Walter, for that kind introduction. Uh, before we get to today's presentations, uh, let me say how impressed I am with the progress our university has made this past year. We adopted a new general education requirements, and that's a big deal. We successfully completed a reaccreditation proce process, and, and we had a great team here working on that. And we saw the completion of Dugmore Hall and the Northside Commons. All I believe are important steps in ensuring that Central Washington University continues to be a leader in higher education in the West. And indeed, we have a great reputation and a growing reputation. It's now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Robert Nellums. Robert is the director of Seattle Center, where he oversees day-to-day -day operations and directs a staff of more than 240 full-time employees and more than 650 temporary and seasonal employees. Robert joined the Seattle Center in 1996 as the Director of Patron Services and became Director in 2006. During his tenure, he has spearheaded efforts to make a number of sweeping changes at Seattle Center, including the Seattle Opera Expansion and the redevelopment of Key Arena, which we're all excited about in Seattle, Robert. Robert also serves as Vice Chairman of the CWU Board of Trustees. He earned his accounting degree from Central, where he also played on the men's basketball team. Please join me in welcoming Robert Nellums. Robert. Thank you, Ron. Wow. Very impressive group. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit from uh, a personal view, and hopefully uh, you'll get my gist uh, as I go through um, my speech. I'm going to start and end with a poem, and in the middle, I'll talk a little bit from my own, uh, my own view. But I'm going to start with a poem by Nina Miriam, and it's, What if we othered your child and you? What if we othered your child and you? What if we surrounded you in a sea of blackness, and in an attempt to get to know you, 
peppered you with a barrage of questions and statements that only served to undercut your value. In our eyes, if you fail, to, uh, if you fail our surprise, battery of quizzes and challenges to test your knowledge, your worth, your view on issues deemed insignificant by you, what if we told you you were the first white-skinned Caucasian we knew and asked to run our hands through your straight hair of red hue? Without regard uh, for how you, our actions feel like an assault to you, our mind, on your mind, your body, and Lord help me, your spirit too. Our, world, our words uh, leave your young ones off balance, feeling out of place, even if in what used to feel like the safest place. We let you know with our lingering gaze, you are an oddity we do not encounter most days. For we choose to isolate ourselves in the most myriad of ways. What we read, watch, see, and play is a reflection of us, our experiences, our tastes, that only serve to exclude or erase your being, your existence. Would you persist in these dark spaces? Encourage your ill-equipped child to shoulder the burden of educating us, all the while fighting the temp temptation to say nothing and just smile. To hide their confusion, the shock and dismay that uh, in a multicultural world, we still isolate ourselves in such a way. We have so little knowledge of your whiteness that we can say, you're the first white-skinned Caucasian I met to this day. If day in and day out we othered your child in you, would we wear you down? Would you begin to frown at your pale complexion and fine thin hair to question your right to breathe the same air? Without the awkward pauses and malignant stares, maybe you'd invest in cornrows and tanning creams as part of a carefully designed plan to make you seem a little less white. Or would you seek the comfort of another venue, one where you, you were free to just be you, where your brothers and sisters understand that they are created, created a magadi and assert that you are too? Or maybe you simply come to take a stand and from, all, and from an early age guide your sons and dollar, daughters through the real world, not an artificial land. Through stories, films, plays and shows, through worship, interpersonal relationships, bridge building, and who knows. I'm confident that they would come to see the world is full of people like them and me. That we're all part of God's intricately woven tapestry stitched together with an abundance of love, grace, and compassion and empathy. You'd continue to shield them from the not so well-intentioned few and surround them with the curious but loving people who do. Learn to celebrate the differences rather than askew. What if we othered your child and you? I am talking about othering or treating people from another group as essentially different and generally inferior uh, to the group you belong to because it's extremely personal for me. Uh, it was extremely personal for me at my time at Central where I was asked uh, by numerous people why I was taking hard classes or why did I do what I was doing or why wasn't I going along with the program and just letting them uh, railroad me through uh, school while I worked. Uh, while I played basketball. It was here where I, asked, um, uh, where I was asked, you know, why am I doing those things? But more importantly, it is because Central has made it clear that they want to bring in a variety of students from different backgrounds because uh, that we want to, uh, want to be considered as a safe, secure, and successful place for all students that we want to be a stepping stone for first-gen students and a model for their success. This is all incredibly inspiring to me. It's why I'm a trustee. It's why I want to be here. And it's also very practical because 2019 is the first year ever that the majority of applicants were students of color. I do not come before you today to accuse, to judge, or to preach. Instead, I come to share my own insights as a CWU grad, a parent of two college grads, a 63-year uh, member of our society, 
uh, and a trustee who is desperately trying to be real with you. What I share here today is my truth. And please know that as Leonard Pitts once said, I am tired of being an unreliable witness to my own experiences. Research shows that the process of othering can lead to complexes around identity, inferiority, inequity, that it creates tension and stress, which we know negatively impacts learning, and that it promotes conflict even among other others. And that, and, and, but the biggest fundamental thing that it does is that it creates an us versus them environment. And being one of them is a lose-lose proposition. It is detrimental to motivation, identity, sense of inclusion. It robs self-esteem and makes students feel like they are unwanted, unwanted guests in someone else's home. Othering usually manifests itself through language. And so how we use language can, be, can have some pretty severe unintended consequences. For instance, how we talk about students who don't have the necessary or optimal prerequisites can cause them to be labeled as remedial, disadvantaged, difficult, and harder to educate. If the faculty can complain about having to take so much time to bring them up to speed, and the administration can complain about how much support and guidance they need, then even when fellow students don't complain about them, they know something is different. They know they are perceived as different. Collectively, we applaud and pat ourselves on the back for the attempt to bring them in to the, into the university community. But that applause rings, rings hollow and falls on deaf ears if you're one of the others being labeled. As you, you feel you are unwelcomed, unwanted, and not part of something bigger than yourself. Let me be clear on this point. Bringing students into the university community, community is not worthy of our applause or praise. However, getting students through the university is worthy of our praise, appreciation, and expectations. So how can we do this, and how can we do this together? We can start by creating inclusive learning environments where classrooms are as culturally neutral as possible like the class I attended today and was a guest speaker. And I read a syllabus that had a fantastic inclusion uh, paragraph that was adopted uh, from work of Dr. Tom Robson. Um, we can employ pedagogical strategies that reflect an understanding of the society, of the social identity and the dominant culture. We can be made aware of our own biases, assumptions and limitations. Don't be frightened, we all have them. We can encourage conversations and dialogues uh, that connect students but, don't, but does not spotlight them. We can focus on social development and justice as much as we focus on, lear on learning. We can treat all students as individuals, not unique individuals, and not individuals representing a group, just individuals. We can believe that all students can achieve excellence and be successful. We can celebrate the enhancements that students from different cultures can bring to our educational experience by using materials that highlight many cultures and contributors. We can employ a faculty that reflects the diversity of the student body. We can enact policies that which undo institutional bias. We can ask the students before, during, and after they are here how we can be better, how can we be more inclusive, and we can simply listen to them and their stories. As I stated earlier, this is personal for me because I've experienced othering here, have felt somewhat helpless while, I'm, while trying to support my children through it, like when my 16-year-old son came to me and said he wanted to leave his school, a school he described as the best place he'd ever been, best school he'd ever been, best teachers he'd ever been, around. And I asked, I told him, I said, you're not making a very strong case for leaving. And he said, Dad, I feel like I'm on stage every day. I host every family. I'm in every publication. I'm on stage every assembly. I just want to be a teenager. I told him that was a strong argument. And I allowed him to move away from that school. 
But so here I am before you today, not judging, not accusing, not preaching, but asking you to join me in making Central a place where we can, uh, can commit to meeting any student where they are and promise them that we will help get them through in their chosen field or study. That is that, that we will do so in an inclusive, engaging, and supportive way, that we understand and believe we are made better by the shared experiences of all of our students, and that we will judge our success by their graduation rates. So I started with the poem, and I want to end with one. And this one has always been a personal favorite. It is We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts we smile. And mouthed with myriad subtleties, why should the world be overwise in counting our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but, O oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but, O oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the, dream, let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, Robert. I said to Robert earlier this morning, we were chatting, and I said, you know, Robert, I just love being in the foxhole with you um, as we deal with various issues here on the, on the campus. He's just, he's wonderful and uh, a joy to work with. It's now my honor to introduce Central Washington University President James L. Gaudino. President Gaudino came to Central 10 years ago. It was a challenging time as the state increased regulations while also withdrawing half of the financial support it had provided Central. Some of us remember that also vividly. It was just incredible. But we preserved, persevered, excuse me, and we survived and we thrived. And we remain committed to our primary mission, providing academic rigor and the highest quality education, and we became a stronger institution in the face of that. We're able to do this because of our faculty, staff, and students coming together under the leadership of President Gaudino to face and overcome those challenges, and they were indeed daunting. Looking back at President Gaudino's decade at Central, there are plenty of highlights. During his tenure, our institution has experienced a record infusion of state construction financing, modernized our budget and management systems, and truly embrace the ideals of becoming a welcoming, inclusive, and diverse campus environment. But as pleased as I am about these past accomplish accomplishments, I'm even more excited about our prospects for the future. I believe that under President Gaudino's able leadership, we will continue to be one of the most dynamic universities in the country. Please join me in welcoming our president, James L. Gaudino. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, uh, Walter, for convening uh, this event, uh, Ron, for that kind and generous uh, introduction, and a special thanks uh, to you, uh, Robert, for, for sharing your wisdom uh, and your story. Both have significant meaning uh, for the future of this university. And I welcome you all to the State of the University 2019, and I, I thank you for your attention today. It, it pleases me greatly to, to say that the state of our university is excellent. Your optimism, dedication, your hard work have combined to meet and to exceed the vision we set for ourselves this past decade. And your continued work and commitment will lay the foundation for the next. In January of this year, the leader of the NWCCU uh, visitation team summarized his assessment of Central by saying, and I quote, Central is an excellent university that is on the cusp 
of greatness, end quote. When he told me that, we were at a meeting over uh, in Seattle, and I was with several faculty members and several uh, administrators. Um, all of our immediate thought was, wow, that's really great. We have succeeded in reaching the vision that we set for ourselves. Basically, we all kind of high-fived the, in the parking lot and said, we did it. We also noted that accreditors are not the only persons to note our significant achievements. For example, the, the results of surveys and focus groups now show a clear and distinctive image of Central as an institution that offers students from all backgrounds a rigorous, individualized, experiential uh, education in a safe and inclusive environment. National organizations and prominent publications now rank Central Washington University atop their lists of comprehensive universities. As Robert alluded to, more students than ever are applying for admission to Central, and we are now listed among the 50 fastest growing universities in the country. Congratulations to everyone for those achievements and particularly to our enrollment management team. And this year, students from 64 countries, also a record, 64 countries traveled here to study at Central University. Well done by our, uh, a job well done for our international programs team. And our alumni participation and support are definitely on the rise. And as a result, giving to this university has doubled in each of the past three years. Credit goes primarily to our alumni and our development staffs. Clearly, we have accomplished a lot. And we have accomplished primarily all that we have set out to achieve at Central. But, and I know all of you who know me and work with me know that there's always a but. Sometimes I wonder if you think it's me, but nevertheless, it is always present. The but is that while I take pride in our achievements, a voice keeps asking, are they enough? And harking back to that January day uh, in Seattle when we were told that we were excellent and on the cusp of greatness, I keep asking myself just what is the difference between being excellent and great? So I did what any 21st century student would do. I Googled it. Uh, and I found that uh, Miriam and Webster tells us that excellence signifies an organization as having an outstanding quality or as being a very good example of its kind. Pretty good. But then I read about what greatness means. Greatness means unusual, uh, considerable, remarkable in its effectiveness, imminent. I like that word imminent. It's one I'm going to talk about a little bit in a moment. And that word cusp really, really bothers me because to be on the cusp suggests that on this side of a line of where I'm standing is what we are. And on this side of the line is something so much better than we are. And I'm wondering, should we just stand here on this line? Well, there's another but there. The answer is absolutely not. And it's not going to surprise you to know that suddenly excellence, while an absolute marvelous achievement that all of you should share in, is not the end of our journey. We must strive for greatness, not for ourselves, but for our students and our alumni. They are what should motivate us to improve. A vision of greatness should not, in anyone's mind, suggest that we need to or should abandon what got us to this point in our history. Rather, achieving greatness requires that we build on our foundation of excellence. And that foundation, fundamentally, at its core, are you, our faculty, our staff, our administration, administrative team, our students, and our community. And as I have repeated over the years, our excellence der derives from a great many factors but none are more important than the quality of our faculty and our staff. Collectively, you manifest a distinctive and inspiring commitment to students. You are 
the strength of the university. But we must redouble our efforts to recruit, to sustain, and to reward those individuals who are responsible for its achievement. In short, you. We must honor our historic commitment to a distinctive learning environment. Central provides opportunities for students to learn in small, experientially based environments. And we invite them here irrespective of their location, their background, or their ability to pay. Our value on diversity means we must work to understand the social, technological, economic, and political perspectives our students bring to us. We must acknowledge that uh, students deserve a voice in defining and assessing what it means to belong and what it means to be welcomed at Central Washington University. As generations of students change, we must adapt the ways in which we manifest that learning and living environment. Although many efforts are already underway, this starts at the very top of the university. Tomorrow, our board of trustees will use their time together at their retreat to, to gain a better understanding of current and future generations of students. We must all open our minds to the perspectives that our students bring to us. And we must embrace a willingness to adapt and meet the needs that they are expressing. Greatness will require us to balance the need to be simultaneously dynamic and deliberate. It will require us to use information wisely, but to also have the confidence to take measured risks. We must work as a team to achieve greatness. We must approach our future as a community that seeks common goals and that enjoys mutual trust. We must honor the value of shared governance, collaboration, and consultation. Now this year, 2019, obviously marks the end of a decade. It is the year in which we can all take pride in achieving the excellence that we've been striving for for the past 10 years. It is also the year that calls for us to revisit our vision and to agree on a pathway to greatness. It is also time to examine our strategic plan, work that is well underway. And as guideposts for both of those efforts, today I am establishing three goals for the university. Each vice president will work within and across divisions to develop strategies for success. They will also develop plans that encourage each of us to work together for their achievement. Goal number one. The first is a continuation of a challenge I made at the State of the University last year. At that time, I asked for a campus-wide, university-wide commitment to increase our freshman to sophomore retention rate. You have responded exceptionally well, and I am pleased to report that this year's freshman to sophomore re uh, retention rate increased from 69% to 71%, a 2% increase in a single year. That's a remarkable achievement, and you should all give yourselves a round of applause. Go ahead, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. It is not something that most universities do. They struggle to stay flat. We're increasing. But to move to greatness, 71% is not good enough. So I am going to ask that we work to increase our first year to second year student retention rate from the current 71% to 80% over the next five years. That is an achievable goal. That is continuing the 2% growth that we experienced this year. And it is a critical goal. Because while recruiting students is important to us, as Trustee Nellum said, it is of limited value if we do not help those students persist to their second, their third, their fourth years, and then to become graduates of Central Washington University. And we're showing some success along the pathway. Uh, we are shaping our information systems and analytics to better anticipate when a student might be in need of help. And I want to pause a little bit here uh, to, to comment because it relates, I think, to what Robert shared with us. Traditional university informatics systems tend to group students based on measurable characteristics and to compare those groupings within and across institutions. 
And those groupings are giving descriptive uh, labels such as first gen, low income, underrepresented, developmental, honors, student athletes, and the list goes on and on. And these labels are typically used to predict success and risk at the university, and then we attempt to align our programs towards one or more of those groupings. Robert has warned us today that grouping and labeling, while perhaps well-intentioned, carries meaning to the individuals who comprise the clusters. Labels are really nothing more than stereotypes that shape how we, that begin to shape how we view the students. They also suggest to students how they are being perceived by us. Modern information systems can be much more comprehensive and analytics can be much more sophisticated. Big data and intelligent analytics can be used to focus not on the group, but on the individual. Programs can be designed to support the person and not the cluster. Individual students should become our unit of support. Student, a singular term, should be our only label. For example, uh, our faculty senate uh, is working to eliminate the discouragement produced by the label such as developmental education. The senate is also working with staff in an effort to be able to ensure each individual student receives the advising needed to navigate the program of choice. We are also examining the connections between community colleges and CWU to facilitate individuals in their, trans in their transition from the college to the university. And while these and other vitally important efforts are, are the responsibility of very specific teams of people, none of us have the comfort of thinking that retention is someone else's job. We can all help no matter where we work or what job we perform at Central. In his new book, The College Dropout Scandal, David Quirp writes that four of every 10 college students nationally will drop out of school. 40% of freshmen will not graduate. Kerb notes that one of the simplest thing that a university can do to help combat this issue is to create environments where students believe, and that's an important distinction, where students believe they belong. In other words, students want to know that the university has their backs. Our success in recruiting uh, students of color suggests that the word is out, that Central does care about them, and it wants to support all of its students. And I believe that to be true. But I also know that not every Central student would agree. We must ensure that each and every student knows that we care and that we have her, his, or their back. We become great when no further student has experienced Robert Nellum's story. Which leads me to the second goal, diversity and inclusivity. Our commitment to uh, in, in inclusivity is articulated in our slogan, welcome, you belong here. And that message reflects how we want our students and our prospective students, our employees and our community to feel about Central. And there are so many ways we can, so many ways that we can make the word welcome a reality. From the academic advisor who helps a student navigate the process of transferring credits, from a community college to the administrator who personally walks a lost freshman from Barge Hall to the registrar's office in Bullion. We call it the spirit, the wildcat way, and we pride ourselves in how we treat one another but it also requires something else. Some students tell me that they question the degree to which they really belong at Central because they fail to see people like themselves working here. We all tend to be more comfortable in, fam in familiar surroundings, and students are no exception. Students want and are encouraged when they, excuse me, want to see and are encouraged when they do see, meet and have an opportunity to work with faculty and staff with whom they have shared experiences. 
We owe them that opportunity, and we must take the necessary steps to attract a diverse pool of candidates for employment at Central Washington University. So today, I am challenging the university to increase its workforce diversity by 5% over the coming five years. Each hiring manager will have a unit-specific set of goals, but I ask each of you, all of us who serve on search committees or who participate in interviews or campus tours, to be sensitive to this goal. The third goal relates to something about something that our students feel deeply about, and I hope we all do, certainly I do, and that topic is sustainability. The world had an opportunity to hear from a young Swedish climate activist, Greta Thunberg, as she addressed the United Nations Climate Action Summit. The power of her passion should give us an indication of the feelings of her generation and remind us of our responsibility to act immediately to confront these challenges. Central actually started the process several years ago, and we have, again, made good success. Dean, Hogue, and Discovery Halls have all earned LEED gold certifications. Bardo Hall, which opened in 2012, earned a LEED platinum cer uh, certification, a, uh, a rare achievement for a resident structure. In 2015, Central implemented a heat recovery system that enables us to heat more than 100,000 square feet of space in Discovery Hall and 135,000 square feet of space in Samuelson solely from the recovery of waste heat from the central steam plant. Nearly 10% of our motor pool vehicles are now hybrids or electric vehicles, and that number will grow as we begin uh, phasing out older, less efficient gas-powered vehicles. In sum, our operation division has has done a remarkable job and has actually reduced our electric gas, uh, excuse me, our electricity and gas consumption while the size of Central's building footprint has increased. But again, let's look towards greatness. I challenge us to further reduce our carbon footprint by 5% in the next five years. And the carbon footprint is only part of the story. Waste is another. Again, we're taking on the challenge with determination. Recycling construction waste has diverted 90% of construction debris, or 12,800 tons, from our landfills. Our irrigation system and conservation strategies are saving us 5 million gallons of water annually. We are usually, excuse me, using locally sourced uh, produce and Vice President Clucking has uh, led the creation of the Wildcat Neighborhood Farm. I like to refer to that as Clucking Farms. But nevertheless, um, uh, it, it's now producing 10,000 pounds of fresh produce to our campus dining facilities. And those same dining facilities have introduced biodegradable plant-based drinking straws, utensils, and food containers. Just last month, the Association for Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education named CW a bronze, a bronze institution for its accomplishments in campus sustainability. Bronze is good. Bronze is excellent. But the next five years is to go gold, and I would push for platinum rating. That is greatness. As I envision our future, the only limits I see are those that we impose upon ourselves. When I attend listening sessions across the campus, I sometimes hear comments, maybe complaints, about the pace of change at Central. These are listening sessions, so I rarely respond. If I were to, I would have to report that I do not foresee a time when change will cease. I honestly don't. We are going to be in a change mode possibly forever, partially because we are on that cusp that line between states of being. And I don't believe lines are fixed. I don't believe the line will stay in place. And if we stand still, we will fall behind. And we cannot do that if we are to be great. Certainly there are and there will be continued challenges, and I'd be lying if I said otherwise. But we succeed simply because we are Central Washington University. If we continue to set aspirational goals, if we 
adapt our work to accomplish them. And if we always, always, always have our students' backs, we will achieve eminence. I will not forget those words. Central is an excellent university on the cusp of greatness. But I no longer see them as a compliment. I know they were intended to be so. I now see them as a vision, and I hope you do as well. And that we all come together to cross over the line that separates excellence from greatness. Thank you for all you do. Go Cats. Thank you, President Gaudino and Trustee Nelms for your insights today. On behalf of Central Washington University, I would like to thank those of you in the audience and those watching on the live stream for your participation. Have a great evening.